Lord Saven. Welcome back, Autobots, Decepticons, and everything in between to another Transformers theory. Today's is going to be covering why Jazz wasn't revived in Transformers 2007. So without further ado, let's jump right in. So as we remember in the first Bayformers movie, Jazz and Ratchet were evacuating civilians right as Megatron appeared on the scene. In an effort to protect the humans, Jazz bravely faced Megatron alone. But he would be no match for the Decepticon leader. To put an end to his heroic nonsense, Megatron took the small Autobot to a rooftop. Despite Jazz's best efforts in trying to fend him off, Megatron would viciously tear him in half. After forcing Starscream to retreat, Ratchet and Ironhide hurried to Jazz where they would try to resuscitate him. But ultimately, there was nothing they could do. In the aftermath of Megatron's defeat, Ironhide held Jazz's body and informed Optimus that they couldn't save him. After passing his remains to Prime, the Autobot leader eulogized him, and the movie soon after came to a close. But the thing that has been puzzling us fans for over 14 years now is that Optimus actually could have been able to revive Jazz, since after observing Megatron's body, he pulled out a AllSpark fragment from his chest. And this fragment could have easily been used to revive Jazz. But in the end, it never was, with it being placed under human protection at Nest. So the question is, why? Well, a common misconception on why Jazz wasn't revived was due to the way he died. You see, many people believe that due to him being snapped in half, the Shard wouldn't be able to revive him. But this would be far from the truth since the Shard is capable of reviving Transformers with severed limbs, proven by Megatron's resurrection in Revenge of the Fallen. In that film, Megatron was able to be revived by the Shard thanks to the help of Scrap Metal's parts, which filled in for Megatron's missing arm and leg. You see, the Shard was able to take the makeshift limbs the Constructicons created and fuse them onto Megatron allowing him to live once more in a new body. And if you want to learn the specifics on how this revival went down, check out my How Megatron Got His Tank Mode video. So with that said, Jazz's severed body wouldn't be a problem for the Shard, but you could say due to the Energon loss, it would be impossible to revive him. Now, contrary to popular belief, Jazz did not die when he was split in half. He actually died several minutes later due to Energon loss. This can be proven since when Ironhide carries Jazz's body, Jazz's gun is retracted, while when he was fighting Megatron, his gun was still out. This proves that for some time after the split, Jazz was alive, since he would need time to retract his gun. And to further back this up, Ironhide tells Prime that he and Ratchet couldn't save Jazz. Prime, we couldn't save him. This detail makes Jazz's death even sadder since Ironhide and Ratchet were able to make it to his body, but they weren't able to fix him in time due to him bleeding out. But circling back to the point of Energon loss being a problem for the Shard, this problem isn't a problem at all since the Shard is capable of replenishing Energon. Since it was able to replenish Jetfires allowing him to break out a stasis lock and transform once again. But to really prove to you guys that the Shard can create Energon, Scapple flat out says it does. The Shard make Energon. So with all that said, the Shard would have clearly been able to revive Jazz. Another scenario people bring up to me all the time on why the Shard wouldn't be able to resurrect Jazz is because Megatron ate his spark which in turn would make it impossible for the Shard to be able to revive him. But this scenario was a scrapped concept from an earlier draft of the script that never made it into the film due to it being too violent. And even if Jazz's spark was destroyed, the Shard would have easily been able to fix that as well since in Revenge of the Fallen, it was able to rebuild Megatron's after it was melted away by the entire AllSpark cube. So in conclusion, there is no technical reason for the Shard not being able to revive Jazz. Since every scenario I proposed, I was easily able to debunk. And it's not like the Autobots did not know it could be used to resurrect Jazz. Since in Optimus' opening speech, he tells us that the AllSpark has the ability to create life. So then why didn't Prime use it? Well, the AllSpark is what brought the majority of Cybertronians to life. According to Prime in Revenge of the Fallen, the AllSpark contained the only recorded history of their race. But interestingly enough, he also says that history was also lost with its destruction. But we know that history wasn't actually lost since the shard that Sam had was able to transfer its history into his mind. And it wouldn't make sense for one AllSpark shard to have knowledge and not the other. 
So, it's likely that between the events of Transformers 1 and Revenge of the Fallen, the Autobots tried to recover their recorded history from the Shard, but were unable to do so due to them not knowing how to access it off a small sliver. And what I mean by this is that the AllSpark is like a hard drive. It's very easy to extract info off of a working hard drive. But now, if you take that hard drive and smash it up, it's going to be very difficult, if not downright impossible, to recover that information. I think this is the problem the Autobots ran into. They likely lost hope in recovering their history, and when more important duties came to the forefront, they tossed the Allspark Shard in the vault, in the hopes of trying to recover the information on it at a later date. In conclusion, the knowledge contained within the Allspark was more vital than any one Cybertronian, and due to there only being one known fragment left, it would be used in trying to preserve and recover the history of their race. On top of that, Jazz sacrificed himself to buy time for the humans to escape. Due to his actions that day, he saved dozens of lives by giving up his own. This was the choice he made despite knowing the consequences, and he went out as a hero for it. Bringing Jazz back from the dead would be immoral since Jazz chose to go out as a hero, and it wouldn't be his choice to be resurrected, since bringing someone back from the dead to do your bidding isn't ethical. I believe Optimus knew this since in the first film he had very strong morals, until they were dragged through the mud in the later sequels. Hence why, on top of the fact that the Shard still contained the recorded history of their race, Prime chose not to resurrect Jazz. As for what happened to his body, it's never shown on screen. But the Transformers Alliance comics gives us some closure depicting the Autobots burying Jazz's remains at sea. And, for the record, the location where they buried him was different to where they dropped the Decepticon remains, meaning that the Shard Energy Blast that resurrected Megatron would not be able to reach Jazz's coffin, officially concluding Jazz's story in the Bayverse. And, just like that, that was why Jazz wasn't revived. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you have not already, check out the Fixing Transformers playlist for some more awesome theories. But before I go, I want to say thank you to all my Patreons and channel members for supporting the channel. Thanks to you guys, Trans Theories is where it is today, so thank you. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like rating because it does help the channel a lot. With that said, keep on theorizing.